If you clicked on this video, you're either planning on visiting Armenia or you're curious about what this tiny country in the Caucasus region between Asia and Europe has to offer. Either way, you're in the right place. Today, I will take you on a day trip from the capital city Yerevan to the beautiful and historic monastery called Gechard, the 2000-year-old Ghani temple, gorgeous landscapes and a completely surreal stone formation that will make us believe we teleported to Mars. Welcome to Armenia. After leaving Yerevan to the west, we make our first stop at the Arch of Chardens. This rather unremarkable monument was designed by the same architect who is behind parts of Armenia's government building and several structures in Victory Park. This arch is dedicated to Yegishe Chardens, an Armenian poet who often used the image of the Armenian's holy mountain Ararat in his work. Its location therefore was not arbitrary. In fact, it's the best spot to view this mountain from a distance. I'm sure though that the smog of Yerevan was not taken into account. The view of nature with these small yellow flowers that you see all over the country is simply stunning, but only a little preview of what we are going to see today. We are now driving deep into the mountains and as you can see the terrain becomes quite unsteady. Our destination is a monastery Gecha that is partially carved into the mountain range that surrounds it. The name of this place literally translates to the Monastery of the Spare and got its name from the Christian story that while Jesus was on the cross, he was wounded with a spear, which according to a legend was brought to Armenia by Judas himself. The monastery was founded in the 4th century by Gregory the Illuminator, which you have to admit is a really, really cool name. But even aside from that, his importance to Armenian culture is that he brought Christianity to the small country. Let's start by exploring the main church, Katochike, which is quite representative of churches in the region. If you look at it from the top, the entire building has the form of a rectangle, whereas the inside has the shape of an equal armed cross. The vibe inside the church is very gloomy, not only because of the all black walls with the tiny windows in the roof, they give this building an even more mystical feeling. Our tour guide told us a trick of how to take great videos. She said to put our camera in a wide angle mode and swing it around, but honestly I don't know what that was supposed to be. For more tips on videography, don't hesitate to subscribe. After we explore the church, let's step outside and take a look at the rest of the monastery while marveling at the beautiful surroundings. We are leaving the main complex through a small gate opposite the entrance. There, after crossing a small bridge, we walk around 100 meters to reach a cave of stones. This monumental cave is sacred as a holy place and fits perfectly in the landscape. Several people left their marks with small pieces of art. Before our bus leaves Gechard, let's walk around and get to see the mountains that this beautiful monastery was placed in. After visiting one of Armenia's most important man-made sites, we're going to now explore one of its most surreal natural phenomena, the Symphony of the Stones. This literally unbelievable monument was created millions of years ago when lava from a nearby volcano entered the gorge and cooled down. It then crystallized and formed thousands of hexagonal and pentagonal basalt columns that are up to 50 meters tall. The composition, no pun intended, of the basalt stone as well as the slow but steady friction of the river Goch form the walls of the canyon that make it seem like we're on a completely different planet. Because their shape resembles the pipes of an organ, the name Symphony of the Stones or Basalt Organ was used. Our tour organized a lunch break as well, but before we could eat, we were shown how to make lavish, the traditional bread of Armenia that you eat with cheese and herbs. Unluckily for me, as a vegan, I don't have a lot of options in the local cuisine, but my rice and potatoes did taste delicious. For a final stop of the day, we are going to visit Garni. This temple was built around the 1st century AD by Trididades I. It is known as the easternmost building of the Greco-Roman world and the most prominent building of pre-Christian Armenia. Today, scholars are unsure whether the structure is actually a temple or a tomb. When Armenia converted to Christianity in the 4th century, most pagan buildings, therefore buildings of worship that had nothing to do with Christianity, were destroyed. However, the temple or tomb was spared and it is unclear why. One theory suggests that it was used as a royal summer house. 
When we walk past the temple, we will have a great look at the Garni Gorge. What we saw before when visiting the Symphony of the Stones looks even more impressive and incredible from above. We are making our way back to the city of Yerevan. If you want to learn about the Soviet architecture and lost places of the capital city, click on the video on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next video on the Switzerland of Armenia.